I'm Nathan Pierce here today to talk about the new uh, K through 12 vaccine mandate uh, from the governor of California. What is the requirement is the first question we're going to address today. And um, it's still a little vague, as you will see with a lot of these uh, points that we're going to make today. Um, we don't have all the details yet uh, because we have not been given all the details from the governor yet, but uh, we do have some. And so that's what we're going to go over today. So. As far as we have information, the requirement is going to be uh, for COVID-19 vaccines for school, for in-person school attendance. And what that means is kids can be enrolled in a school. That's not, uh, that's not the issue. The issue is they cannot attend in-person school attendance at their school of enrollment if they are not vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine. Um, obviously, this is not um, in force yet, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But that is uh, the requirement is for in-person instruction uh, at the school of enrollment. So, next, uh, what is um, uh, the the next uh, piece here that we're going to address is um, the COVID-19 vaccine requirements uh, will apply to all pupils of any public or private elementary or secondary schools. That means if your student is enrolled in a, a public campus school or a private campus school, uh, those students will be affected by this new requirement uh, from the governor. Um, a student who is not vaccinated may remain enrolled in the, an independent study program or may do some sort of a school from home option through their school of enrollment, uh, but they may not attend uh, in-person instruction. So what are the exemptions? Now, currently in law, if a, a vaccine is not added to the required vaccines for school attendance uh, by the legislature, if it's not added to the code, there is a, uh, an exemption, a, um, a personal beliefs exemption, either for personal beliefs or for medical exemption that is available for uh, for mandated vaccines that are mandated by the California Department of Public Health as opposed to by the legislature. Now there is currently a list in the code of, of mandated vaccines for school attendance that the legislature approved. There is no personal beliefs exemption for those vaccines. However, uh, this new requirement has not been voted on by the legislature. It is not in the code it is being directed by the governor that the CDPH will uh, create this mandate through a regulatory process. And because of that process, uh, the code actually specifies that the, um, the new mandate made by regulation as directed by the governor would, uh, would qualify for a medical uh, or personal beliefs exemption. So it's going to be handled differently than the rest of the vaccines in the statutes in California in, in the Health and Safety Code if things go according to the plan that the governor has laid out in the press releases on his website. So next, the governor has stated that the current uh, verify or test requirement for staff at public and private schools will be converted to a vaccine mandate no later than when the first phase of the student requirement becomes effective. In other words, right now, teachers and staff at schools are allowed to either get tested or provide proof of, a vac of, a, of their vaccine, uh, vaccinated status. But this new regulation would say that's not good enough anymore. Uh, the, the test element of that is not acceptable any longer and a mandatory vaccine will replace that as opposed to allowing them to have the option to either vaccinate or get tested. Next, let's discuss when this will go into effect. So ultimately what we're looking at is a two-phase two process, um, splitting the uh, students of California school-age students into two groups. There's the seventh through twelfth grades, which is the one is the secondary grade span, is what it's referred to as, and then there's the K through sixth grade span. So they're splitting it into two groups. 
and uh, they would be uh, saying essentially that students will be required to be vaccinated for in-person learning starting the term following FDA full approval of the vaccine for their specific grade span. So um, we would expect the 7th through 12th grade span to get full FDA approval for that age group before the K through 6th age group, right? So ultimately, we're going to see um, the 7th through 12th regulation uh, go into full effect the semester following that whatever date it is that the FDA makes full approval of vaccines for that that age age group or that grade span, that 7th through 12th grade span. Then the uh, the that group would be required to be vaccinated at that time. Now, the K through sixth would probably happen later because it's further, that age group is further from getting a FDA full approval. So the K through sixth group would, would then become mandatory, uh, uh, need to get vaccinated the term starting after the FDA grants full approval for that grade span. So it's a two, two, uh, two phase process, beginning with the most likely the seventh through twelfth grade span, and then with the K through sixth grade span following. So based on their current projections, um, according to the governor's office, their full approval for ages twelve and up, uh, they expect um, the requirement would apply to grades seven through twelve starting on July 1st of 2022. It's possible that it could go into effect before that. Theoretically, it could start in January, but according to the governor's office, they're expecting it to start in July of 2022 next year. So that effectively would mean that these mandates for vaccination status of students for COVID-19 vaccines would happen next fall. All right. Um, finally, I want to um, make sure that you understand this is not just a straight up executive order like we've seen a little bit um, over the well quite a bit over the last couple of years and it's not it's it's not a, a governor's um, executive order and it's not a uh, it's not an act of the legislature putting it into the code it's somewhere in between which is called regulation and what the governor has done is he has has asked the CDPH, the California Department of Public Health, to create regulations that would uh, bring all of this about and would create the protocols for uh, mandating the vaccine for the two uh, age groups and uh, bringing this into effect and actually stating how it's all going to work. And um, that's a process in which um, the public does have an opportunity for public comment, so it's important to be aware and to know when that process is going to be happening. Uh, we at our office here at FPM, we monitor those regulations every day um, already uh, because of uh, just things that happen uh, over the years, and we monitor those regulations every day. So there's two types of regulations. There's emergency regulations and standard regulations that have a little bit longer process of becoming approved. So. We monitor both types, and I just want you to be aware that uh, this could happen, this, could, this process could start at any time, so we need to be ready to make phone calls. So if you uh, are not already on our email list or monitoring social media, please uh, get connected with us, get on our email list so that you can be aware as early as possible what actions need to be taken once this regulation process gets started. So thank you for watching. I hope this helps. You can get uh, more information about FPM on our website and ask questions at fpmca.org. Thanks.